Hello, I'm Katherine Schreiber for Broadway and Beyond TV, and I'm so excited because Broadway is back. And I'm thrilled to have as my first guest for this season celebrating the return to Broadway, the extraordinarily talented actress, singer, dancer, multi-award winner, who will be starring in a play this fall, one of those rare individuals who is known by only one name, La Chance, and I will admit her now. Hello, hello. Oh, you look absolutely stunning and radiant <laughs> as always. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being part of this. This is very exciting because this is our first episode celebrating the return to Broadway. Um, Thank you for so having me. Oh, my pleasure. And I think the last time we saw each other in person was when you were so gorgeous, funny, and amazing in A Christmas Carol. And, yes. and I just want to say when you sang, it was like... A moment of glory you just filled the theater and you just reached everyone's soul you were just spectacular and thank you well i mean it with all my heart and for those who don't know everything about miss la chance although i'm sure you've all recognized her from tv la chance um this beautiful woman is a tony award winner for originating the role of silly mm -hmm. the color purple in 2006 you created the role of t moon in once on this island yes and Tony nominated for that and you were Tony nominated for your brilliant performance in Donna Summer Musical. Mm -hmm. I love bragging about you. You won the Emmy for PBS Handel's Messiah. It was me, Robert Spencer, and Ming Ayesa, who's from Australia. And um, what they did was they, they took Handel's Messiah with the Boston Pops Orchestra oh. and sort of put a rock flair on it. And it was so good. It was... Um, directed by Danny Davis. I don't know if you know Danny okay. and, and Jason Howland did the arrangements. It was just really beautiful. Wow. And you know, you were a star of uh, stage screen and, and TV. You were in that little known movie, The Help. Yes. And, yeah. And you started Melinda mm -hmm. and you've been on TV a lot. Uh, most recently <laughs> The Blacklist and The Good Fight and The Underground Railroad. So, you know, it's interesting when, when Broadway shut down, so many of us Broadway actors that live here in the New York area, um, we were sort of at a loss of what to yeah. do with our time. And I've done TV and film in my career in the past, but um, theater is my first love. And I always end up going back to theater. Somehow I end up back on stage and I'm grateful for the energy to keep doing it. Don't know how much longer I'll have this energy, but I'm oh, excited yeah. that I still you're have the energy you're to young. keep doing it. But um, we were fortunate that all of the, uh, the shows that shoot here in New York, and there are quite a few, um, they had the pool of theater performers available to them yeah. now. So yes. we all were going in and, um, and seeing for different roles. So I was very excited to have the opportunity to get on television and I love it. I want to do it more. I want to do more of it. So I'm oh, excited. I'm sure you're going to keep doing future. it more, but of course you're going to be busy with your new show, which we're going to get to later. But I want to talk to you because first about um, where you're from, when you were, where were you born and what oh. made you want to do theater and fall in love with theater? Sure, absolutely. So I'm, um, first of all, let me just say, I have two cats back there. Actually, yes, we see cats. them. We see that they're, they're very nicely silhouetted. I just want to say they want to go outside so badly, but it's not happening because okay. <laughs> I want that. I want to keep them. Okay. So um, that's those are my kitties. But um, yes, I was born in St. Augustine, Florida. My dad was military and my mom was stay at home. Um, so we lived up and down the east and west coast. He was Coast Guard. Um, my dad actually retired from the Coast Guard. And um, but then when I was uh, just approaching high school, my parents went their separate ways. And uh -huh. my mom, my mom settled in Connecticut with my uncle Norman with us. And um, at the proximity to New York, I started seeing these commercials for musicals. I was like, Mom, I want to go see that. So uh -huh. she started taking me to see different shows. And um, that's really where I got my bug. I was like, oh, I, I, I found my people. Wow. These are my people. Wow. This is my tribe. And what was the first show you saw? My first Broadway musical was um, Chicago. Wow. It was interesting. That was my first one. I was completely hooked at that point. In fact, 
Graciela Danielle was in the ensemble of the production that I saw, one of the dancers who is one of the most brilliant directors and my and has been instrumental in my career being as fulfilling as it has been. She directed me in Once on this Island and she was choreographer of Ragtime and she uh, was the choreographer and director in uh, Dessa Rose, a play that I did at Lincoln Center. Um, so it's ironic that um, we were able to come back together and she didn't even know who I was and I didn't know who she was. You were just this little have, kid. You were just this yeah, little kid enjoying this impact on my life. This is a part of the theme of the show that I talk about the transformative power of theater and how theater can not only help um, transform lives, but even save lives for those who are involved in theater and also just by experiencing theater. Um, has there been that kind of transformative moment in your life when you felt something or experienced that made you say, yes, this, this, this is it, or infected you in, in besides watching the commercial, seeing uh, Chicago, that made a deep impact on you? I'd have to say the production early in life that I saw that deeply affected me was For Colored Girls Who Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough mm -hmm. uh, by Ntozaki Shange. That was the, um, the play that really, um, I was very young and there were, there were uh, moments that I didn't even understand because I just didn't, I didn't have the um, emotional maturity at the time, but I do remember feeling so moved and, and watching, it's a funny moment, I was watching my mom and her girlfriends, there were moments that I didn't understand and they would go, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and I'd say, what is happening around me? And everyone would go, mm, mm, mm. And because I was out with all the big ladies, I want all the grown ups. I wanted to be a grown up too. <laughs> so, in a very inappropriate time in the <laughs> play, I said, mm, mm, mm. And it's everyone a around kid. laughed at me. A little kid. <laughs> How old were you? Trying to be a big girl. I was 12. <laughs> and I was trying so hard to be a big girl with my mom and her grown up friends. We laugh about that story now. It's very oh. funny. But the play did leave such an impact on me, seeing all these beautiful black and brown women on stage yeah, yeah. talking about their lives and, and, and what was important to them and their struggles and, and seeing it reflected. I thought, oh, my God, these are there's there's representation there. And there has to be. I, you know, I remember that being a groundbreaking show. I mean, it was so, yeah. so moving. Um, yeah. And that's that's the ability that theater has actually to to let everyone see themselves on stage and, and feel like they're not alone. Well, that's part of the power of theater. I, I just want to say yes. also, uh, you have been amazing during the COVID time when we've all been on, in our caves with the blankets over our heads um, by yes. sharing your gifts with all of us doing, doing concerts, uh, doing charity stuff and just singing for us. Uh, uh, all the Broadway community has given, has helped us. I, you know, I think it's helped people absolutely survive. And that's just such the importance and power of theater. So thank you. Yes, it helps us too. I mean, you know, for us Broadway performers and just, you know, anyone, singers, actors, everyone, we all needed a place to put our emotions. We were no yeah. longer on stages. And a lot of us started working in different areas of our industry. I started doing voiceover work more often. and working on the TV more often. I started doing things that, you know, that kept me away from the stage, but I- That uh, wasn't so bad, right, working on TV. It that wasn't so bad. In <laughs> fact, I have to bad say, for you. <laughs> in fact, I have to say, I loved the TV work that I did. Yeah. I was so fortunate to work with Barry Jenkins, yeah. the director and creator of the Underground Railroad, it was just a dream come true for me. He is one of the most prolific directors we have today he won the Oscar for Moonlight. But, you know, when a show is going on, the audience is very much a part of that production Absolutely. as well. Because the audience is the other character yeah. in the play that yeah. we have to win over. Yeah, And that is a wonderful challenge for us because we love to do it. Backstage, sometimes we have, um, like the actors that are on stage first will come off stage and those of us waiting off stage sometimes would say, what are they like to know? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it'd be like, oh, they're in a good mood. They're, they're jovial. Oh, they're a little persnickety tonight. Oh, yeah. we think they've had a few cocktails. I mean, <laughs> there are several different moods that an audience takes on right, right. that makes each night a new performance. People say, how can you do that eight shows a week? The same thing. 
And I have to remind people, it's not the same thing. Every night is very different yeah. and very fulfilling. Oh,